Dear Value Investors, welcome back to a new episode of 36 Square Capital, the Value Investor channel. In this episode, we will be discussing the latest developments around Credit Suisse and a potential takeover of UBS that is being actually discussed as we speak this Sunday. So some of you have been reaching out to me to ask my opinion about what is going on with Credit Suisse and what is my perspective on Credit Suisse as a value investor. And so in fact, it's pure coincidence of the timing. We are today Sunday 19, 2023. And in fact, two days ago, I published a new training, The Art of Reading Financial Statements, where in fact, in lecture 13, I was not on the example of Credit Suisse, but on Bank of America, I was commenting the risks that are related, in fact, to the balance sheet of banks. So let's l first listen into that before then going further into the conversation uh, about Credit Suisse. I, I mean, always said in all my webinars and trainings, I'm not an investor into the financial sector because I don't understand it enough. What is what are the instruments that the bank is carrying in its balance sheet? And I, I, it's not my investment style, but maybe you are very performant in that investment universe, and I'm very happy for you on that. So. I just want to, I will use the term, warn you. I'm not saying that Bank of America has a bad balance sheet. I think they have a very good balance sheet. Uh, what I want to, to warn you about is that in the conversation we're having here, analyzing the debt, analyzing the interest coverage ratio, it's much more complex when you have to analyze um, banks. Be attentive when looking at the balance sheet of a bank that really the bank will have a different uh, structure in the balance sheet if, versus many of the other companies, if you're looking at industry, manufacturing, retail, sportswear, technology, etc. And of course, this creates risk because what happens at a certain point in time, and you had those runs on, on banks when the bank was sometimes announced as being close to bankruptcy, that uh, everybody was claiming and wanted to retrieve their holdings, the deposits they gave to the bank from the bank before the bank uh, was about to go bankrupt and being liquidated. And the, the banking system works, amongst others, on trust. Just look at what happened with Lehman Brothers. Is At a certain point in time, nobody wanted to, in fact, uh, give more money to Lehman Brothers because... The, other banks do not know exactly well what is clearly their situation. And I'm trying to explain it in a simple way. So it's very interesting and, again, pure coincidence that I was discussing about this, uh, let's say, my perspective about investing into financial service industry uh, in the latest course I've been publishing when I was discussing how to look at the balance sheet of Bank of America. And so, I mean, as some of you reach out to me to have my opinion, so first of all, I wanted to share with you that uh, I, I consider that indeed investing into financial service industry is not my in, in my circle of competence. But nonetheless, I think that we can discuss a little bit further what are the learnings or questions that raise from the situation with uh, Credit Suisse. I think the first one is about the stress test. I mean, since the 2018 financial crisis, there has been a lot of news, reporting, annual stress test specifically looking at systemic banks that they have to have certain capital requirements to avoid a, a, a meltdown of the financial system to some extent. But here, in my opinion, and again, without being an expert on the financial service industry, I believe that those stress tests, and you can read the latest Fed reports where they stress tested again Credit Suisse as well, independent of what were the what was the outcome in terms of capital requirements. I believe that those financial stress tests, they may cover to some extent some macroeconomic events or macroeconomic downturns. But here the problem with Credit Suisse is a problem of trust from the Credit Suisse customers and what they think about their deposits and the guarantee on their deposits uh, versus their bank, where they uh, already, you can see this, we will discuss financial statements later on, but you see that already in October 2022 as well, there was really a huge amount of, of uh, or big outflows of uh, customer deposits from Credit Suisse. So that's the first thing that, I mean, you can have your opinion about stress tests. You have heard my opinion about stress tests. The second thing is, I mean, and it's again pure coincidence, not later than last week, March 14th, Credit Suisse has been publishing their fiscal 2022, so the fiscal year 2022 annual report. So I looked actually into their, uh, into the auditor's opinion and also into the management comments. And some may claim or may say that, yeah, what, what, what was the auditor thinking 
uh, c could the auditor not see what was going on? Uh, what were the thoughts about management? And and again, with all due respect, I do believe that the auditor, I mean, I have read the auditor's opinion, they have a qualified opinion, so that's never good. It's always better to have an unqualified opinion from the statutory auditor. But nonetheless, I believe that it's not their role to cover the risks related to uh, to trust from uh, the customers. I think what their job is, is to make sure that the financial statements, uh, they accurately report the substance. Of course, financial statements are a simplified version of uh, very complex uh, company processes, but they, they reflect uh, in a material manner the substance of the company. And again, the financial statements outside of the critical audit matters that uh, I think was PwC who was a statutory that they have raised, none of the critical audit matters are linked, in fact, to the, the, the risks or what is going on now with, with Credit Suisse. But nonetheless, when you look at the financial statements, the financial statements, they do report a financial loss. And, and again, I, and they do show uh, a strong decrease in the assets under management by by Credit Suisse, and and again, I do not believe that the auditor uh, is now the the shortcuts uh, actor to be blamed here. Then you can look. The third point is you can look at management. I mean, how do you feel about management? What has been management doing? Have they, at least in the latest financial statements, uh, disclosing anything about this? And yes, they have been disclosing. They they are sharing. There has been a huge outflow of assets. And, and of course, I mean, when you understand how banks work, I mean, this is obviously a, a huge problem because when uh, customers are claiming their deposits, the bank has to sell to a certain extent their assets. And if everybody is claiming their deposits, of course, at a certain point in time, the, 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 the timing of selling the assets that are kind of guaranteeing the customer deposits will not be the right one. And sorry to say, but now it and, and since the last quarter, I mean, there are, there is a lot of nervosity going on 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 the markets with uh, high interest rates, high inflation, uh, still the situation in in Ukraine with Russia, etc. So, but still, I believe that management has been disclosing in the financial statements, uh, and they are showing losses. They are showing the reduction in assets under management. Now, I mean, I mean, some people will then argue that, yeah, this is uh, bad luck for Credit Suisse. To some extent, yes, it is. I'm just surprised that uh, this happened so far over the last five days. But when, when you look, and you can look here at the graph, when you look back, I mean, there have been some uh, issues. And, and just look at, at the share price. Since 2013, the share price has been divided by, by 10 times. That's huge. And also, there have been some, let's say, uh, internal, external scandals, mis, uh, I mean, let's say, bad management decisions that have been taken. And of course, this is not supporting the trust from the customers on their deposits. And that's basically why probably it has accelerated since October 2022 when uh, the customers have been wanted to, to, to grab the hands around their money and, and really having this huge outflow of money out of Credit Suisse. Can this happen to, I mean, uh, as a value investor, I'm in, investing more into consumer defensive kind of companies. Can this happen to consumer defensive companies? So those big brands like Nestle, Procter & Gamble, Unilever, etc. The answer is yes, it could happen because, I mean, those companies, they have pricing power on some very big brands and uh, I don't remember now exactly for Unilever but I think Unilever has like four or five very big multi-billion brands and of course if they are making a mistake on a marketing campaign and they are messing up with that marketing campaign they may uh, of course be hit by a bad buzz specifically on social media and you may have a certain amount of customers that will move away from from that brand but i do not believe and that's because just the balance sheet structure is different and and when i mean specifically when i look at those big brands that i invest into where the debt to equity ratio is reasonable that even in a situation of liquidation the company would face such a situation as credit suisse i think that banks intrinsically they have a different balance sheet structure because they have those customer deposits that they can invest into financial markets into other let's say uh, remuneration uh, uh, or income yielding instruments. 
and and a problem of trust will really accelerate then the sale of those assets because they need to find the collateral the substance to guarantee the customer deposits so um so i think that consumer defensive brands they are exposed to some extent but not at the same speed that financial uh, industry uh, companies like in this case banks have been exposed and of course you can uh, you can ask yourself what have we learned from a 2008 financial crisis with Lehman Brothers where there was a, a mistrust on Lehman Brothers and it came nearly to complete meltdown of the financial system uh, it, I mean have we learned anything I mean uh, 15 years later so of course and it's very valid to ask yourself those questions so all in all for me um, I mean before we discuss like what will be a potential outcome i mean all in all for me it again reconfirms what i was stating in lecture 13 of the other of reading financial statements course is that uh, financial services and insurance service industry is not my circle of competence and for the reasons and like and the comments and the insights i was sharing with you i will uh, uh, I hope that I will stay away from that industry also in the future as I did in, in the past. So that's for sure for me just reconfirming what I was stating in my training and also uh, sticking to my circle of competence as a value investor. So, I mean, just wrapping up here, these episodes, what could be the potential outcome? I mean, we are Sunday afternoon, it's a quarter to four and um, it looks like there are rumors out there that UBS has made a proposal to buy buy Credit Suisse for 27 cents uh, per share while at closing on Friday evening of the market Credit Suisse was uh, quoted at 1.86 so I mean of course if you are a Credit Suisse investor this would mean that what you currently have in terms of equity would again be kind of divided by eight which is of course very dramatic for you as uh, uh, an investor if you're a potential investor is it better than maybe ending up with zero i do not know i mean i leave that up to the investors uh, and, and the decision that will be taken apparently this afternoon at five i know that the swiss government uh, tries to make everything necessary that before monday morning markets opening that the let's say the decision is clear what is going on with credit suisse and removing all possible uncertainty from the market i mean last but not least and and that's for me also very important to mention as a closing remark is we shall not forget that in such situations and there are rumors out there that 10,000 jobs will be slashed that potentially there are 10,000 families that will be impacted by this situation and i think that's really the least i mean leaving aside the investor conversation but investors normally they tend to have money to some extent but i think that what is more dramatic is that potentially there are thousands of jobs that will be slashed and through that there are thousands of families that will be impacted where their parents if it is mom or dad will be losing their job so let's see how this will unfold and probably on monday morning we will have or even uh, tonight sunday evening we will have a clear view of what is going on and if the ubs a uh, rumored proposal will be accepted by the Credit Suisse shareholders or not. So with that, thanks for tuning in and talk to you in the next episodes.